The first runner-up is Philippines, the 1999 Miss Universe. Boulet is one of the pioneers of the what we now call beauty and brains. Beauty does not use me, I use it. It's a gift that I think as a believer God gave me to use. Everybody wanted to touch her, everybody wanted to talk to her, everybody wanted photographs with her, it was just amazing. She knows what works for her, but I, I think she would be a great political leader. <laughs> I want to see her president of Botswana one day. The bright lights of the catwalk. Fashion capitals of the world, where beautiful models strut their stuff. It is here that budding and established designers gather. But before they graced the runways, some of them led an ordinary existence. One such story is that of Mpule Kwelagobe, a girl from Botswana who dared to dream. All is calm and peaceful in Kaberoni, or Gabs as the locals call their city. Trade and business is thriving. Mpule Kwelagobe was born here on the 11th of November 1979. Botswana is often referred to as the Switzerland of Africa, simply because the country has been well governed since its independence in 1966. In a continent ravaged by war and famine, the country is one of the few middle income economies in all of Africa aided in no small part by the discovery of diamonds in 1967. However, in the mid-1980s, Khabarone was plagued by a conflict in neighboring South Africa most Botswana knew little about. What I remember very strongly is actually the South African Defense Force invading Botswana. I remember we lived in a neighborhood called Extension 12, which was next to a very large informal settlement called Buntling. And it's where some of the ANC refugees used to hide when they were in transit through Botswana. And so I had this very vivid memory of it being nighttime and we're all crouching on the floor of my mother's room. We lived in a two bedroom house and you could hear screams in Buntleng and then you could hear the tanks rolling through our neighborhood. The youngest of three children born to Justice and Dibelang Kwelagobe a young Mpule was deeply affected by the events taking place in both her neighborhood and apartheid South Africa. I went to a private um, British school and really being aware that we were privileged as black African children to have the type of upbringing that we had in Botswana and the fact that there were children in a country next to ours who potentially were being denied that same type of education and that same kind of life. A lot of the families were very similar to us um, in the sense that uh, a lot of the parents were first-generation urban residents. So it was a very idyllic, almost utopian kind of uh, lifestyle then. Years later, Mpule met Nelson Mandela, South Africa's first black president who had been jailed for 27 years by the apartheid regime. Mandela's experiences, alongside those of his countrymen, would inspire not only Mpule, but millions across their borders. In my own personal way, I want to believe that you cannot engage a leader like Nelson Mandela, an icon like Nelson Mandela, and not have some of his light and magic rub, out, rub off, off on you. Mpule's sheltered life would come to a grinding halt when her mother, a bank teller, lost her job. Due to the prevailing economic situation, 
the family would move to Lobatse, a town located some 73 kilometers from Khaberon. Here she enrolled at the Lobatse Senior Secondary School, Lobsec, a government institution to complete her A-levels. Ghanaian David Anobil, Mpule's former teacher at Lobsec, fondly remembers the carefree teen he came across. I used to stay you know, at a house close to the main road, Haberoni, and uh, I believe she lived across the road. So I could see her you know, each day after school. You know, she was hardworking because uh, she, she stayed longer than the normal hours, and she, she would cross the street with her books going home. Up to this day, I still picture Impule as that girl, you know, who used to cross the road to a uh, house, you know. Mpule would be Anobil's student for only two weeks, as she was transferred to a pure science class where she took biology, physics, and chemistry. The lanky girl was one of the few girls in that department. Initially, I said, oh, he yeah, was an intelligent student who could have made a class more, maybe more lively, and then maybe you could have helped, you know, uh, one way or the other. But at the same time, I was happy for her because I knew she was going to go into her, you know, uh, appropriate class, where she could compete with the other uh, students of her caliber. So I was happy for her. But I felt a bit, you know, down, because I knew she could have helped a lot uh, in the class. You know. While still a student at Lobsec, Mpule, encouraged by her mother, decided to audition for the 1997 Miss Botswana Beauty Contest. It was an impulsive decision that changed the then 17-year-old's life completely, as she would go on to win the Miss Botswana crown in 1997. Maleta Rosa Mogwe was the Miss World franchise holder at the time in Botswana. She would audition young girls to compete at the pageant. When she spotted Mpule in the Miss Botswana contest, she knew Mpule was a girl who would leave an indelible mark on her. <laughs> she struck me out of all the girls who were there. She struck me as somebody who enjoyed life. Um, nothing fazed her. She really had something special about her. And her whole character was very, she was a very polite person. She interacted with anybody, whether you're old or young. And that to me just summed it up she had to come. And as it happened, she actually won the Miss Botswana competition. Um, and I took her to Seychelles. We got there and uh, she didn't do so well. I've actually not seen this on the doll together as a combination, so you'll share this with For the 1997 Miss World contest in the Seychelles, Mpula wore designs by Angelou Lambrou. An upcoming designer, the then 22-year-old, had also come up with the entire collection for all the contestants competing in the 1997 Miss Botswana. When Mpula won Miss Botswana and was getting ready to go to Miss World, that's when um, her and I really uh, bonded and got together because she would come and visit me in my hometown and that's where I would, you know, um, have her fittings. I designed an entire wardrobe for her to wear for her trip. And she would come, we'd do fittings, and that's, that bonded us, you know? That's where we really got to know each other, and um, we got to realize that we shared the same dreams. We really were in a small country, small towns, respected and loved it, but knew that we both wanted much more. Mpule might have been the toast of her country after she bagged Miss Botswana 1997, but not everybody was pleased with her meteoric rise to stardom. The very first person to be very dis displeased with all of this was my headmaster. He's displeased with the fact that I entered a pageant without his permission, and now I've won Miss Botswana and he feels I'm going to bring uh, be a negative influence. Because government schools are very conservative, and I was pretty well known for putting on full makeup to go to school and for being into my appearance and into my looks and he felt that it was going to be uh, distracting and be a negative influence to the young women at our school. I remember in his speech said something like this, uh, if Impule had informed me that she was going to you know participate in Miss Botswana you know 
pageant, I would have discouraged her, you know. I, I think he said this in a, not in a bad way, uh, but, you know, maybe being an educator, you know, uh, an educator, he was looking for her in the sense that her uh, studies, you know, her education first. The lovely Mpule Kwalohobi. In 1999, two years after winning Miss Botswana, Maleta decided to enter Mpule into the Miss Universe competition. To have carried a message of hope that one day the battle against HIV AIDS will be won. Well, the things that really upset me was, of course, the, then uh, the Morleys who ran Miss World um, had the nerve to turn around and say that African girls could never, ever be a Miss World, which I couldn't understand. So that was the first bite that I got that I've got to prove this person wrong. Knowing how intelligent she was, um, not, not just a pretty face, not just a, a pageant girl, but a, a, here's a beauty, um, but also intelligent, ambitious. Um, I truly thought that if she had the opportunity to, you know, uh, stand out or win something like the pageant, uh, the, the Miss Universe pageant, that would help her move on to greater things. For Angelou, the Miss Universe extravaganza was yet another chance to launch himself into a wider international audience. With Mpule as his muse, Angelou, the boy from Silibi Pique, a small rural town in Botswana, was ready to take the world of fashion by storm. What most people are not aware of is that the stunning dress that Mpule wore might never have been made. A week before the pageant, Angelou's original design had gotten lost. He had to come up with a new concept fast. With the competition rapidly approaching, Angelou made the seven hour long journey to Johannesburg, South Africa, so as to buy materials for yet another piece that would capture people's imagination. Mpule flipped when she saw this dress. And in fact, you know what, I think it was meant to happen. You know, in life, things happen. If they're meant to happen, they're meant to happen. You know, as cliche as that may sound, you know, things happen for a reason, but they do. <laughs> so I think, you know, um, this was the right color for her. Um, uh, I, wanted, I wanted her to be in something really special because I really believe this was Mpule's moment. Armed with school books and without fanfare, Mpule, Maleta and Angelou departed for the Caribbean islands of Trinidad and Tobago. The tickets they were traveling on had been donated by the management of Air Botswana. Even though we didn't have any money, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. I mean, we flew to, to Trinidad. We couldn't afford to stay in a hotel. We slept on somebody's floor. Can you believe that? You know? Um, and uh, we'd get up and, and then go off and buy something to eat, but everything was down to the last tebe. Their country's maiden foray into the competition happened without much government support. American Virgin Islands, Miss Argentina. In 1999, Miss the 48th Virginia. edition Miss of Miss Universe Hill. had attracted Virgin entries Island. from 84 countries. And say hi to Miss Botswana. From the onset of the competition, the judges and the audience liked Mpule. Annabelle says this is due to two things, her beauty and her intelligence. To be a beauty queen, it's not only about you know, beauty from the outside, you know, but the brains must be there. So as I was saying, she could have been a doctor, an architect, lawyer, yeah, the brains, yeah. So beauty and brains, I believe she, 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 she's one of the pioneers. I believe so. And, from, and you can see, this is the trend now. In all pageants, it's all about beauty and brains, beauty and brains, that's right. Held over a two-week period, the contest is more than a beauty pageant. Women aspiring to become Miss Universe must be intelligent, well-mannered and cultured. Due to her poise and well-thought-out responses during the question rounds, Mpule would enter into the top ten at the first time of asking. Right. What do you do for fun? In Botswana? Yeah. You go to your cattle post. It is known that every Mozana has a cattle post full of cattle, so that's where you go. Okay. Botswana. Pula would score nine out of a possible ten in the interview section. 
Her point tally would be one of the highest awarded by the 10 judges. She was joined by two other delegates from the African continent, Ghanaian Akuba Kujo and Sonia Rasiti from South Africa. Nevertheless, the beauty from Botswana would be the only African contestant to sail into the finals. She averaged a nine in the most popular categories, the swimsuit and evening gown competitions. With Mpule's entry into the top three of a major beauty pageant, her place in the history books had already been cast in stone. Now what stood between Mpule and the Miss Universe crown was one final question, and contestants from the Philippines and Spain. The question is, if Miss Universe were to become pregnant during her reign, should she be allowed to continue as Miss Universe? Personally, I think Miss Universe is a symbol of a woman as well. She's celebrating her femininity. And I believe that, thank you. And I believe that if she should fall pregnant, it will not in any way interrupt her duties. I believe that as a woman, she should celebrate her femininity. Thank you. That's right. We'll begin with the second runner-up. After the final question and answer session, Diana Noguera from Spain was announced as the second runner-up. For once, not having her name called out was what Mpule hoped for. Since the winner is normally announced last, whoever was going to be called next was going to be one disappointed fair lady. The winner cannot fulfill her duties. The first runner-up takes over. Tonight, the first runner-up and winner of a cash scholarship from Oscar de la Renta Swimwear is... Tonight, the first runner-up is Philippines, the 1999 Miss Universe Botswana. Little Botswana had achieved the unimaginable. This evening started, you were one in 84, now you're one in a million. You win, you're crowned on stage, the minute that the cameras switch off, there's a team of people around you. It's a very haphazard, haphazard time because of all five, six, seven, eight people all around you, and they're all now your new team, and you don't even know them. So immediately that night, your whole life has changed. Meanwhile, back home. When she was crowned, I happened to know immediately from, because, the, because of the mood, uh, because uh, there, were, there were the nation, the people, there were people who were watching the pageant. And because of that, everybody, even those that were not watching, they got to have the news one way or the other. And uh, we got to go online because it was on the internet. You can imagine the following day at work, you know, almost every, it was just the news uh, in the country. I reckon if Mpula stood up then and said she was going to be president of the country, she would have won right there and then. <laughs> you know? No, it, it was amazing. I, I've never experienced or seen anything like that ever in my life, and I'm pretty old. <laughs> you know, I've never seen anything like it. And it didn't matter where we went. Everybody wanted to touch her, everybody wanted to talk to her, everybody wanted photographs with her. It was just amazing. Due to her new status, Mpule could have easily lived and fitted into any of the marquee capitals, partied with celebrities and toured the world with rock stars like most models. However, the beauty from Gaberoni had other plans. Along with Maleta Luna Rosa, Mpule embarked on championing the fight against HIV and AIDS, which at that moment in time was decimating Botswana. Mpule knew about it. She also luckily, um, or fortunately, also felt the same way about the AIDS um, pandemic that was hitting Botswana really seriously. And she was also worried about the youth. Her age mates, you know, who was going to take over from us once we're all gone? Yeah, um, and uh, that, that was one of the things that she really was. So I was very impressed. Today, it's estimated nearly a quarter of Botswana's population of 2.1 million is living with the HIV virus. 
At the height of the epidemic in 2002, the country's life expectancy dropped to just 49 years as compared to 64 years in the early 90s. Mpule attributes the sharp increase in disease numbers to the behavioral tendencies of most Botswana. Today it's easier for people to have affairs and, not to, and they don't even classify them as affairs. Do we really ever go to school to learn as a woman how to be able to engage with a man and how to be in a relationship with, with a man. That's something that's just left randomly to just happen by itself. And yet I think today we need instruction as young couples coming together. We need instruction of how we must keep open communication so that our marriages and our relationships are strong. Mpule garnered more accolades in 2000 when she was appointed a goodwill ambassador for Botswana by the United Nations and the United Nations Population Fund. She was supposed to focus on two things, the youth and HIV and AIDS. 60% of our continent is people like myself under the age of 35. And predominantly, it's young people under the age of 25. So I'm really speaking to young people and saying that we can change Africa, we can transform Africa. With Mpule on the forefront in the fight against HIV and AIDS, she helped draw attention to an epidemic that was almost wiping out an entire population. She did this by initiating a special campaign for HIV and AIDS prevention in the year 2000 after visiting Zambia and Uganda. The work that I do today really came from the time I'm 17 years old when I'm going as Miss Botswana to Zambia and as Miss Botswana to Uganda and really now meeting women that had had to uh, become leaders in their communities because of the HIV AIDS crisis. So that was my first time really encountering these issues was in Zambia and Uganda. In 2001, the government of Botswana started offering antiretrovirals or ARVs to people living with the virus. According to the World Health Organization, Botswana's life expectancy in 2014 stood at 62 years. This dramatic increase from 12 years earlier can be attributed mainly to a drop in HIV and AIDS rates in the country. People would not talk about it and hence, you know, uh, people maybe they were embarrassed, didn't want to tell their families, didn't want this and this is, you know, but in order to stop um, a disease like HIV, you need to educate people. And that's where Umpula came in. She um, really um, did so much to go town to town to town, from town to town, to talk about this and open it up and allow people to come and, uh, and, and talk their experience. And it's okay. Various companies, both private and public, lined up to be associated with the 34-year-old. Among them was Botswana Post. Through the Philately Museum, Botswana Post launched commemorative stamps for the model who had brought world attention to her country. To us, and as it is known in the international arena, we don't normally celebrate and have a stamp uh, on someone who is still alive. If it be so, that person should have achieved uh, something that is of a world-class standard, and that's what Mpule gave us. It would only be the third and final time that the image of a living person was ever imprinted on stamps. Although Mpule was now a supermodel, education was and still is important to her. It is in this regard that she chose to join Columbia University in New York, an Ivy League research institution in 2002. She selected the school after being awarded a full scholarship by the then president of Botswana, Festus Mokhai. In 2006, she graduated with a degree in international political economy. For most people, Models are expected to be perfect. Intelligence is not a trait they would readily associate with them. Mpule, though, has no qualms using her beauty for worthy causes. 
Beauty does not use me, I use it. If it means that by being a beautiful, attractive woman, I can drive investment and focus into areas that otherwise would not get that attention, such as agriculture and rural development and informal settlements and slums. If it means that I can mobilize people to walk with me through slums and to villages, predominantly because I'm an attractive woman, I'm okay with it. It's a gift that I think as a believer God gave me to use. It doesn't use me. It doesn't control me. And in line with her position in society, she decided to use her beauty to tackle another African problem, the perennial food crisis on the continent. Through the Mpule Institute for Endogenous Development, she traverses Africa, meeting various stakeholders, especially women farmers. Based in New York City, the Institute is an advocacy and public policy think tank. Or you start again. <laughs> it aims to champion agriculture-led development, including green growth, gender equality, women's and youth empowerment. We must be ashamed as Africa that we still see hunger, poverty and the famines that we often see. Agriculture should not be something that's only just for subsistence. There are farmers that really understand it's a business. And I'm so grateful that I came across two women that understand this and are really running it as a business. Now we need to get young people in there. Today she is on an agricultural tour of Kinangop constituency in Nyandarua County. Located in the central regions of Kenya, the county is one of the country's food baskets. She might be a former Miss Universe, but she is at ease with these women. According to Mpule, if Africa is to be food sufficient, then women have to be put on the forefront. <laughs> For me, engaging with such a farmer as Mrs. Ngumi, seeing this real story of empowered women, resilient rural people, they're not sitting by idly waiting for the world to come and save them or rescue them. They're waking up every morning, they're hardworking, they're resilient, they're willing to get out into the field and do work, and they're willing to learn and improve themselves as smallholder farmers. Initiatives such as these have endeared Mpule to the many people that she has met. From HIV and AIDS to sustainable agriculture, she is a model with a difference. We're saying agriculture can be sexy. This is what it looks like. We're glamorizing agriculture for you. Young people need to get into agriculture. They need to start businesses along the value chain. And so we're rebranding agriculture. We're rebranding African agriculture. So she'll be remembered also for being very, in Italian you say simpatico, meaning very um, understanding and, and embracing and, and very um, sympathetic to everything around her. She's this woman who's strong in her thoughts. Um, she's, um, you know, uh, very opinionated. She knows what works for her, but I, I think she would be a great political leader. <laughs> I want to see her president of Botswana one day. Let's <laughs> go.